Silas Farley's choreography and the dancers from the Academy. Uh, I didn't introduce myself earlier. I will now. I'm Alan Chapman, and I'm here uh, as a friend of Marlon Martinez, as a fan of Marlon Martinez, and also as a member of the music theory faculty of the Colburn Conservatory, which I do not mention uh, gratuitously because Marlon was my student when he was both an undergraduate and a graduate student of the Colburn Conservatory. Uh, and in case you didn't already know, and I suspect you already do, students at Colburn are supremely talented musicians. And typically they are supremely talented classical musicians. But Marlon Martinez is, to say the least, an anomaly. Because he is not only a supremely talented jazz uh, classical bassist, but also uh, as you will soon find out, if you don't already know, a supremely talented jazz bassist, uh, which makes him a rather special person in this world of music. Uh, I have had the pleasure of hearing this world-class ensemble he's put together a number of times. As a matter of fact, many of them know that I traveled to the far reaches of Orange County. I braved the freeways to Orange County just to have the opportunity to introduce them there. I'm pleased to say it was a shorter trip today, but an equal pleasure to ask you to give a very warm welcome to Marlon Martinez and the Marlonius Jazz Orchestra.
Yeah, give it up for Isaac Wilson on piano. A Colburn alum, by the way. And Mike Cordone on the trumpet. Yeah, this is the Marlonius Jazz Orchestra. Thanks so much. This is our first time playing here at the Colburn School. And this is our first time. So also playing in Zipper Hall. Uh, you guys are a fantastic, beautiful audience. Thank, thanks so much for your positive energy. I'd like to point out that there are some members of the Billy Strayhorn family tree here. A show of hands. Not everybody here. <laughs> I know all of you want to, though. <laughs> there we go. I see some. <laughs> all right. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, this is fantastic. So, Billy Strayhorn. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Billy Strayhorn was not a household name in his lifetime. Uh, his writing and arranging collaborator, Duke Ellington, was the star of the show, and it was his band. Uh, and Billy Strayhorn wrote in the shadows, I'd say, behind Duke Ellington. Oftentimes, he, Billy was known as the flame behind so many of Duke Ellington's projects. But these were both geniuses in their own orbit. So I would like to focus on Billy Strayhorn's orbit today. Uh, as I think is necessary for our time. Billy Strayhorn is not really uh, woven intricately into the fabric of uh, many educational institutions. So I really hope that Colburn School will find a, uh, basically offer Billy Strayhorn a home here. And thank you guys so much for being here tonight. We're gonna start with a really interesting piece of music. What you just heard was Take the A Train. I don't know how many of you guys heard that one. All right, good, so you guys all know. So that was Take the A-Train. Um, and this next composition, you might not know, this one is called Overture to a Jam Session. It's going to feature the writing style of Billy Strayhorn in the late 40s. And he was writing music for Duke Ellington that combined his interests, uh, Strayhorn's interests in classical music and other folk traditions, putting it into jazz and putting it into big band music. Um, and this piece supposedly was performed at Carnegie Hall in 1947. It ended up being out here at the Hollywood Bowl in 1947, and then all of a sudden the piece just kind of disappeared. Um, and so I believe Marlonius Jazz Orchestra might be the first, or one of the first, to be able to do a version of our own uh, using Billy Strayhorn's original sc uh, score and uh, his beautiful handwriting. So uh, this is called Overture to a Jam Session, and it's going to feature Jake Chap Chapman on the vibraphone. Thank you.
Jake Chapman on a timpani as well. Timpani debut at Colburn. <laughs> that was also Mike Cordon on trumpet again. And this mighty saxophone section. That's Jacob Sesney on the clarinet and tenor saxophone. Jasper Dutz, Tristan Capel, Jacob Shulman, Eric Croissant. We'll get to the brass in a little bit too. This next one is called Smata. This one um, actually kind of foreshadows a lot of the uh, traditions of jazz that was happening in the 50s and 60s with what we nowadays we call that kind of like modal jazz or a more minimalist kind of way of playing that people like Miles Davis and John Coltrane and Gil Evans were uh, all a part of. Uh, Smata foreshadows that, but Smata was written in 1935 and when Billy Strayhorn was a high school kid um, out of Pittsburgh and he was an unknown and that was around the time he also wrote his torch ballad, Lush Life. So a lot of Strayhorn's music goes way back to his high school years. The arrangement we're gonna do is from the 50s, and so this tune became sort of like a radio theme as well. And this is called Smata.
Jacob Sesney on the clarinet. Jake Chapman, vibraphone. All right. One of the things that uh, made Billy Strayhorn stand out um, in the uh, jazz canon is his uh, arrangements and original compositions, which featured a great saxophone player named Johnny Hodges. Uh, yeah. He's a classic. And so this is a, a very dynamic piece. We're going to feature Tristan Capel on the alto saxophone uh, in the role of Johnny Hodges, but maybe I shouldn't say that. It's really in the role of Tristan. So because that's what, that's what it really should be. So it's all you, and this is uh, a piece called Pretty Girl. And, um, this is the extended version of Pretty Girl. There's a short version that uh, Ellington fans would know called The Star-Crossed Lovers, and it was for a Shakespearean suite based off of the works of uh, Shakespeare, and it, that was called Such Sweet Thunder. And so Star-Crossed Lovers ended up being one of the tunes that they used for this suite. Uh, unfortunately, um, the really beautiful introduction and the transition and the key change and all this beautiful stuff that Strayhorn provided for the band was left on the cutting room floor. And so this version is going to be the one that Strayhorn intended right before the sessions took place. So Tristan, let's, let's hear it from you.
give it up for Tristan Capel. I'd like to mention that uh, I actually danced this song with my wife, Rachel Martinez, who is in the audience right now. My mouth got all choked up as I said that. <laughs> Rachel's out there. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> She's my librarian as well, <laughs> because doing this is a big ordeal. <laughs> so thank you. Um, this next composition will feature Isaac. Uh, Isaac will uh, give us a, a thing that Strayhorn wrote called Cashmere Cutie. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones, so I hope you dig it too. Thank you. 
Thank you. Isaac Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> this next one is about you guys being here, and it's a matinee. It's a Sunday matinee. So this is Billy Strayhorn's matinee. What do we have on this one? We have Jacob Sesney on tenor sax. All right, here we go. Okay, all right, we got this tune right before the intermission. This is called Rain Check, and Billy Strayhorn wrote it in Los Angeles uh, around 1941. This was one of his favorite places to visit. He had a lot of friends out here in the movie business and all the, the good Hollywood stuff. Uh, I was going to say Halloween, that's funny. <laughs> so, Hollywood. <laughs> I said it right anyway. So, yeah, uh, Billy Strayhorn said he was writing about rain in L.A., and that's kind of a weird thing. And so, um, what we're going to do is open this tune up a little bit. We're going to feature um, Ido Meshalam on trombone. Is that the valve trombone? He's got the valve trombone. Check that thing out. Somebody's blasting something. That sounded, that sounded good. <laughs> Jamel, are you on this one? All right, Jamel Adisa on trumpet. Good. And this is called Rain Check. We're also going to feature Jacob Shulman on tenor saxophone. He's just making sure he's whispering.
Thank you very much. We're going to take a 10 minute break. Thank you so much. That was Rain Check. Jacob Shulman, tenor saxophone. All right. Jamal Adisa on trumpet. <laughs> we'll get that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stick around, please. Blues in Orbit, Jamela Adisa on the trumpet, and the saxophone section. Yeah. We also got Isaac Wilson. Cool. So, welcome to the second set. Those of you who are new or uh, checking us out for a bit, thank you so much for being in here. We're the Marlonius Jazz Orchestra. This is called Ever Up and Onward, a tribute to Billy Strayhorn. So, we're uh, reviving some of Strayhorn's classics, as well as playing lesser known and and um, some, yeah, lesser known and forgotten gems that Strayhorn wrote. And uh, 
let's get right into it. So the next composition we're gonna do is, is one that uh, we don't know if it was recorded by the Ellington Orchestra. Um, maybe it was rehearsed, those, those kind of things we, will just, we just will never know, you know. Uh, this one's called Blue House. We got Ivan Mailspin on the trombone. Yeah, and the sax section. You can clap. <laughs> Makes it easier for us up here. <laughs> Jacob Schulman, tenor saxophone. 
All right, this next chart, this is one of my favorite charts of Billy's. This is called All Day Long. And uh, as you, you know, play Billy Strayhorn all day long today, hope you do some of that too after this concert because he's got so much music. And so much of this music, it's just surprising how prolific he was. And yet uh, his name just wouldn't end up on the marquee or his name would just not end up being a conversation, you know, among uh, elitists. Uh, you know, but insiders knew, jur you know, journalists and friends knew Millie Strayhorn was a genius, and Duke Ellington loved him so much, gave him a platform to really compose uh, very honest, beautiful music. I would like to also add, uh, for those of you who don't really know much about Billy Strayhorn, but Billy Strayhorn is important because, in musical terms, because he kind of pushed boundaries in writing for jazz ensembles, and writing for big bands in particular, um, he did a lot of things with motivic de development, themes, putting themes together, stringing them along, keeping continuity in charts and uh, introductions, transitions. I wish we could play so many other pieces to prove this point, but um, as I hope and we hope that uh, we don't have to do that today in order to prove that Billy Strayhorn wrote very beautiful, interesting music all through his life. So this one's called All Day Long, and this just features the big band. And uh, this features every, everybody, and this is, I guess we can call this, I don't know if it's through composed or, or not, but uh, this is, uh, it's all in the writing in this one. This is called All Day Long. Aaron Janik on trumpet, on the melody there. All right, we're gonna play one of Strayhorn's classics. This is a, a, one of the great jazz standards. This is called Chelsea Bridge. It's one of the greatest ballads that I think was ever written in jazz. And uh, this is gonna feature Ido Meshalam on trombone. It's gonna feature the saxophone section. And this is also an extended version. This is, again, something Strayhorn wrote, and this is 
what the original sounded like before they go into the studio to record. Uh, back in the 40s, those were kind of the days where you just couldn't play a certain, you know, a certain amount of time. Uh, the L they weren't even LPs at, the, at that time, long playing things. Uh, in the 30s and 40s, it was all like 78s, and so two minute, three minute tunes was what they were expecting. But Strayhorn would still just write really beautiful, fully fledged out, you know, pieces of music. And so this is the original version of Chelsea Bridge.
Yeah, yeah. Chelsea Bridge. Chelsea Bridge. This next one is uh, a chart that I dug up. Um, some of these charts that we played tonight were transcriptions of mine that I later was able to check with other sources, including Billy Strayhorn's own uh, handwritten scores. Um, and uh, again, with the help of Billy Strayhorn Songs Incorporated, thank you so much uh, for you guys. They're tuning in right now as well. So let's acknowledge them. Um, for example, overture to a jam session in the first set, like that was something that that was like a COVID project. That was a that was like a lockdown thing where I decided to transcribe uh, a, a ten-page score uh, by ear. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a, yes. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I'm Steve Harvey. <laughs> So <laughs> the suit is close. It's, it's close. It's not shiny enough. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So Overture, I did a nine or ten page transcription, and it was very um, difficult because these recordings, when you're doing this kind of thing, you have to really listen carefully because there's crackles on the recording. There's, there's all kinds of like overtones or like notes that are that are bringing out different harmonics of the instruments between the sections. Those are things that you have, to, uh, you have to check with yourself, make sure that you're hearing the right notes, hearing the right voicings. And a lot of the old recordings of the 40s and 50s, they're just so hard to hear the low end because so much of it is mid-register and treble, upper register uh, kind of things. And so I spent a long, a long time on uh, charts like Overture to a Jam Session. This next one, Coffee and Kisses, is a, is a cute, short tune. We're going to feature uh, Anthony Fung on this one. And uh, who else, who's, who's soloing the trumpets? Aaron Janik on trumpet. Uh, this one is, uh, this didn't take as long, but it's really interesting because, uh, you know, sometimes you just spend a lot of time on one. Other times it's just, things just seem a little more intuitive uh, to the, the, the person who, you know, hasn't talked to Strayhorn. We, we, we don't have a way of communicating with him because he's no longer with us, you know. He passed away in 1967. And so um, I wish, you know, I have a million questions. Sometimes you just have to trust that these are the notes that are there. Sometimes the live performances, there might be mistakes or just different interpretations of individual notes in the score. So the good thing is with Coffee and Kisses, Strayhorn had a very clean score, everything written out, including who's playing what. Sometimes he would put people's names I don't know, there's this, this chart that's floating around back here of take the A train. I think if you look carefully, you'll see people's names, I think, written on parts. It just shows you who's playing what. Oh, there it is. Uh, it says bar top. It says that thing on the lower uh, corner here where I'm pointing says bar top. That means berry sacks on top. So he didn't have all the space to put the berry sacks in the score, so he'd have to put the berry notes would be on the top, and you just say uh, the player has to play that down an octave when they actually give it to who we call a copyist, somebody who passes out all the parts. You know, so there's all kinds of information like that in Strayhorn's music, and there are clues. But uh, the next couple of tunes, like Coffee and Kisses and Hello, they don't have a whole lot of um, information, but there's clean writing. So sometimes you just got to go with it. It's a, it's an interesting process, is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> so this is called uh, Coffee and Kisses.
Okay. We're, the, we're gonna do a blues now. We're gonna feature some soloists here. Uh, this is one example, like I was saying, uh, sometimes you have to just trust that what you see on the page is what it is. Uh, and uh, in this example called Hello, it's a blues, but it doesn't say it's a blues. Uh, it, it, it just has 12 bars of music, cleanly written, you know, in this case there weren't a lot of eraser marks and spilled coffee and whatever. And I mean, there's one chart that I looked at where it looked like the, the, looked like the paper was like in water. <laughs> and so, you know, and it, it's all yellow and gross and there's holes in it. So in this case, it was just cleanly written, but there's no information, just the music. And when I sat down at the piano to play the first bar, uh, to hear the chords all together, the trumpets, trombones, the saxes together, I was hearing this sound. It's like, whoa, like, what is this? Do I have the notes wrong? Am I, am I reading it wrong? It, that could very well be the case, you know, and I... I read it and read it and read it, and I was like going over it, and I'm like, wow, this is actually what he wrote for a 12-bar blues. Uh, and this is called Hello, so we're gonna have some people blow here. Give me a sec while I remember who's gonna do it. <laughs> I know we got Jake Chapman here. Jasper Dutes, yeah, you're gonna solo. Kai Palmer on trumpet back there. Eric Croissant, baritone. I think that's it, yeah? Paul, you want to take one? Paul Nelson. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is called Hello. I think I might have some too.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was hip. That was hip. <laughs> cool. Hey, uh, you guys like Rhapsody in Blue, huh? This is Colburn, after all. This is a classical institution. Billy Strayhorn loved George Gershwin. Uh, Billy Strayhorn wrote an arrangement of Rhapsody in Blue. Uh, it's really interesting, and he wrote it for the Ellington Orchestra, and it was put on a record, uh, I think it was called Recollections of the Big Band Era. Um, and so it's like a compilation of big band charts from um, like the swing era before World War II. And uh, Strayhorn and Ellington were doing kind of like covers, uh, like new versions, new big band charts of old tunes. And uh, Rhapsody in Blue was one that Strayhorn really wanted to do because he saw the opportunity to write it. So this is really unique, and I hope you enjoy this surprising version of Rhapsody in Blue. And it's surprising because it does not start with the clarinet. <laughs> Finally.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Rhapsody in Blue, arranged by Billy Strayhorn, 1962. All right, well, we're, we're coming to a close already. I hope you enjoyed this uh, afternoon of Billy Strayhorn. As he used to say, ever up and onward, that was his favorite thing to say. He also did say, you only live once, so maybe he was the first to say, YOLO. I don't know. <laughs> that is a true story. I, I don't know. Maybe he was the first to say that. But uh, UMMG, Upper Manhattan Medical Group, this was dedicated to his uh, doctors, him and Duke Ellington. They had physicians, um, Arthur Logan. Uh, was Ellington's primary physician, and, and so was Strayhorn's, I believe. And um, those guys stuck real close with both composers. Um, and um, the thing that was really cool about the Logans was that in New York, they used to hold private events like benefits and soirees and salons. And some of the people who would roll by would be uh, Jackie Robinson and Martin Luther King Jr., who used to give speeches for fundraisers and charitable events, and guess who would play piano every single time Martin Luther King Jr. would need some music backing his speeches? It was always Billy Strayhorn, and they were good buddies. And so uh, a short but beautiful friendship that those guys had. Um, so a lot of things happened at UMMG, and this is gonna be, oh, let's see, who's on this? Jasper Dutes, yep, Jamel Adisa, all right, well, let's just play it. You guys are, you guys are kind of quiet. Kind of quiet. Why? <laughs> this is it, UMMG. Oh, I'd like to actually start. Why don't we do a little duet on this? All right, Isaac and I are gonna do something.
Thank you very much, Marlonius Jazz Orchestra. Follow us online, on Instagram, Marlonius Music, and MarlonMartinezMusic.com. Thank you so much, Colburn School. That might be it. That might be it. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you for the Amplify series. Thank you very much.